Here, we were able, but with the help of congregations like you, to distribute 9,880 Bibles. And these are in different languages, and we're still trying to make sure that every convert has a Bible in his or her own language. We were able to help 162 congregations with communion trays and cups. We aided uh, 133 preachers with bicycles so that they could go around and reach more people with the gospel and helped 160 preachers with lanterns so that they could have light when they go out into the villages. We printed 5,000 songbooks for distribution to the churches and we were able to print 75,000 basic doctrinal tracts and these are about three to three and a half cents a piece and they're a great aid to the preachers so that they can distribute those as they go around. Now working along with the preachers this past year, God blessed our efforts with 2,140 precious souls baptized into Christ. And that doesn't include the number that has been reached by the preachers on their own when there's no foreigner there and you'll see some of that in the video report. Also, those preachers report in this last year, 60 new congregations have been established. And so the work is spreading and going into new areas, and that's part of the challenge, trying to keep up with the opportunities that we have. But let me begin the video, and we'll comment on that as we go along. is about one-third the size of the United States with more than a billion people soon uh, to have more people than China. So currently, we're from in the southern part of India. We began at Bangalore and then uh, up to Uri. And from I might just make mention of the fact I said up to Udi, but we went south on the map. And that's because we go up in the mountains. So we went south, but going up uh, at a higher elevation. Kind of like in the New Testament, you read they went up to a certain place or they went down to a certain place. And by, what, by the way, they didn't have all of those figures back then, which shows that uh, the scripture is a divine revelation. These facts were revealed to them. And all of that is exactly accurate geographically. But anyway, it was up to Udi. Now, this just gives you some idea where current work is taking place. In the years that have passed, we've worked from the very farthest north down to the farthest south, and from Calcutta, now renamed Kolkata, over to Mumbai, that used to be Bombay, and all in between. But we're concentrating recently in the areas that were identified on the map. Then we still have the six homes caring for widows and orphans and a little over 200 uh, orphan children. And then we have about 70 to 80 widows that are being helped outside the homes with a small amount every month. But we were having a gospel meeting over at one of the orphan homes, so I went over to visit with the children. Those two strange looking men are from Texas 
and uh, Brother Bradley Crider on the left, Brother Dale Foster on the right. They're preachers out in Texas. They came over for about two weeks and we appreciated having them. We kept them busy from morning till night teaching in classes for the preacher training schools and preaching in gospel meetings. We always like to see our children come home. They grow up and leave home and go out and get married and have their own families and have their jobs and make their way in life. But we're always glad to see them come home and it's true in the orphan homes. We're always happy to see them come back and visit and the younger children are delighted to have them and these are some of the older boys and they were out playing cricket with them this day. But I'd gotten together some of the smaller children. I'd preached a sermon and I was wanting to see how much they might have comprehended, so I was asking them some questions. So even talking with the little children, we have to use translators. Translators are no problem over there. With 14 major dialects, 1,652 minor dialects, they often have to have translators to talk to each other. And the states are sort of divided by language. And uh, anyway, the, talking to the children, we had to use translators. And they know two or three languages, but unfortunately not English. Some of them, however, do study in the English medium. Uh, Brother Tim had earlier mentioned Bangalore to someone, and of course that uh, is sort of the Silicon Valley of India. And if you have a computer, sooner or later you call somebody and you talk to somebody in India. <laughs> I called recently and was talking about a problem. I said, are you in Bangalore? He said, no, I'm in Delhi. So they're spreading out, <laughs> but it's still over there. But this is one of the congregations in Bangalore, the Anandpuram congregation. They invited me over to speak for them.
they were speaking the Canada language, K-A-N-N-A-D-A, -N -N -A -A, if you were interested in that. But now what you're going to see is something that has no religious significance whatsoever, had nothing to do with the worship. It was something that took place after services, and it's an Indian custom. But one of the young ladies and one of the young men in the congregation had become engaged. To sort of recognize their engagement, they gave a gift to all of the members, and the gift was a banana. In all of the orphan homes, they have Bible classes in the morning and Bible classes in the evening, and uh, then they attend all the services of the church. And most all of the children do render obedience to the gospel before they leave the home. And then we find when they go out, wherever they attend, they're faithful in their attendance and they're an asset to the church. This young lady uh, decided she wanted to obey the gospel and using the portable baptistry, the water shallow, so it takes two people. One holds her feet down while the other lays her back in the water to make sure that she's immersed. Well. I don't know if you're into automotives. This was uh, given to the home by some brethren out in Texas and very much appreciated. But this brand new van with the road tax and the sales tax and the registration and license and all that was involved came to about $5,000. So a very reasonably priced and be nice if we had something like that over here. Now we're out in a rural area for a gospel meeting and the ones that are standing are the ones who responded to the invitation.
this is one of the problems that we're experiencing more and more now, and that's the aggressive uh, uh, Hindu extremists who are threatening uh, congregations not to assemble. They've attacked church buildings. They've attacked preachers. And in some places, they've killed people, not any members of the church, but people in denominations. They've raped women. They've burned buildings. And unfortunately, the authorities seem to sort of look the other way because the majority of the population in India is Hindu. And uh, they want to carry out this Hindu Thwa movement to put all religions out of India except for the Hindu religion and have only one language, that is the Hindi language. And so they become uh, very extreme and very violent in what they're doing. But I'm happy to say that our preachers and the brethren over there are continuing to worship and the preachers are out preaching and they're not intimidated by these people at all and certainly appreciate and admire their courage and their determination to continue in spite of those threats. We have four branches of the South India Bible College that uh, operates to train men to preach. If we're ever going to evangelize a nation like India, it'll be through the training of the converts to preach to their countrymen. And one of the branches of the South India Bible College is located here at Keddy, where there are also two orphan homes. And we have two classrooms, one large classroom and this small classroom. And then we have a dormitory where the men stay when they come there to study. Now, in addition to those four regular schools, we have about 50 week-long uh, schools that are conducted in cities, towns, and villages around India uh, that serve the uh, same purpose. Somebody asked me, why don't they have clothespins? Well, they do. I went out and bought clothespins <laughs> and gave to them, but for some reason, they don't use them. And I've noticed this in all of the homes. They just wash and throw it across the line, and they don't use the clothespins, and I don't know why. Thank you. 
Goa was a Portuguese colony until 1961. And the Indian Army marched in and took that uh, colony, which is now an Indian state, away from Portugal. But because of the Portuguese influence there for so many years, it was primarily Catholic. There were very few other denominations and very few Hindu groups there. But I'm thankful to say that God's blessed our efforts. We've been going and working there. And now we have some 13 small congregations that are meeting in various parts of the state of Goa. And we still go there, of course, for gospel meetings and Bible classes. And this will just take you along, give you an idea of what some of the gospel meetings are like. They're conducted in the homes of individuals. And the people are just seated on the floor. And after this meeting was concluded, we went to another meeting, and it was darker there. We had one response here and took the lady out to the river for baptism, but it was too dark to make a video. And then the next day we had a rented hall where we were assembling. And from there we go over to the state of Andhra Pradesh and we have a class for preachers. A number of preachers had come together. And this is another gospel meeting out in the village. The people just seated under the shade of a tree or wherever they can. It isn't uh, easy many times to be a Christian in India and sometimes those who obey the gospel have opposition from their own family members and I've known of some who've been put out of the family because they did become Christians and then they face opposition in the communities and from other people. But I'm happy to say we're still trying to survey and make an assessment and we still find that some 70% of those who obey the gospel do remain faithful. And this is in spite of the problems and troubles that they face, but it speaks to their sincerity and to their dedication that they do continue faithful after they obey the gospel.
And from Andhra Pradesh, we go down to the city of Chennai and a gathering of preachers. When we don't have Bible classes, we spend our time over there in gospel meetings, and we begin in the morning many times and go through the day into the evening, and this was one of those days, and we started in a section of the city of Chennai that used to be Madras, and we're meeting in a little lane, and uh, we've got the people seated on both sides of the lane so that there's a walkthrough for the people who are passing by. We had three responses at this meeting and we had to take them some distance to find water where they could be baptized into Christ and the preacher on this occasion is Brother Sassy Kumar. And this was our next meeting, and this was in downtown Chennai, very close to the American consulate. And a new convert has this apartment, and he lets the church use it for meetings and for Bible classes. And so we had several who responded, and we went over to the beach. That was the nearest water in order for these people to be baptized. Now, when we got over to the beach, I didn't walk with them. Because if some of the Hindu Thwa people had been out on that beach and they had seen a foreigner there, along with these Indians baptizing people, it could have uh, created quite, quite a problem. So I walked at some distance and let them go on ahead. 
and do the baptizing, and I uh, made the video with the telephoto lens. Now, one of the challenges of baptizing in the ocean is that they don't want to go out too far for fear of being swept back out into the sea and drowned. So they stand closer in, and they have to wait for a, a, a deep wave to come in. And sometimes they might have to wait for six, seven, eight waves before there's one that's deep enough that they can immerse the people. And we can turn those lights on, and I think our time is uh, about to get away from us, and we'll stop there. But I want you to see this lighthouse. That's the lighthouse on the beach in Chennai. Now, this is the beach in Chennai where just a few years ago the tsunami waves came in, and there were thousands of people out there that day uh, for recreational purposes, and they were swept out into the ocean and drowned, and their bodies were never recovered. And I couldn't help but think when we were there that those people were there for recreation and they died, uh, I'm sure, unprepared. And these people had come on this occasion that they might be baptized into Christ, that they might have life eternal. So two different uh, uses for the beach. But we've sort of touched the hem of the garment again this morning and I wanted to give you some idea of what's going on in evangelism, edification, and benevolence. And I hope it is encouraging to you and informative. And again, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you here at Maysville for your financial and prayerful support of the Lord's work in India and other parts of the world as well. You're certainly to be commended for your love for souls and the support that you're giving to help carry the gospel around the world. After services this morning, if you have any question, I'll be happy to try to answer it for you. But I guess for now we'll drive down the peg and I'll get this out of the way. And thank you very much.